based on analysis, but then also I'd like to do some testing to verify that real as-built hardware, like the little samples that we can run around the room here, uh, that real hardware works the same as the analysis predictions. The best way to understand what causes structures to move is a system called a free body diagram. Uh, all free body diagram is to say take one piece of structure, identify all the forces or all the moments that act on that. Once you understand the forces on it and the mass properties or any constraints, then you have a good understanding of how that mechanism will move. In the case here, um, what you can see here is we've got a flop wing here, a fixed wing down below, and we're using a rubber band simulation running around the corner here. And if you only look at the forces from the rubber band, there are six locations here where the rubber band contacts the uh, uh, fixed wing or the flop wing. So those six forces are important. Now it turns out that uh, three of those forces, uh, what's called here uh, four, five, and six, those forces contact the fixed wing, so they don't really do anything as far as the flop wing is concerned. So we're down to just these top three forces, uh, one, two, and three. Uh, just visually, you can look at them. one and two uh, cancel each other out. They don't matter. Uh, so we're basically down to the entire behavior of the flop wing is controlled by this force here, this F3. And in particular, it's F3 times the moment arm between the hinge axis and where that force, a uh, line of force is acting. That's what controls how flop wings operate or don't operate. So that's the, the critical item. Now if you uh, analyze the structure, you can take that chart of the previous or you can do uh, CAD drawings or whatever. And it's really simple from just geometry or trigonometry to go through and look at how those uh, originally the six forces, but in particular that one force in the uh, moment arm, uh, how those change as a function of the deployment angle, or in this case I'm saying zero degrees is where the wing is all the way closed, 180 degrees is here, and if you have any dihedral out here, it's even farther. So zero degrees, 180, and beyond. Uh, if you go through the geometry here, the, the really incredible thing here is it shows that if you have a standard flop wing with uh, actually a straight edge, no dihedral in the joint, that uh, just from a theoretical basis, the amount of moment to open the wing theoretically goes to zero right where you need the moment. So basically flop wings by their basic design, by their basic geometry, flop wings don't want to open. So you got to work really hard to make them open. Um, now, theory says that I ignore any effects of uh, actual thicknesses. If you include the thickness of the rubber band, actually the rubber band provides a very small offset or a very small moment arm, so that force times the moment arm, even with a tiny rubber band, you've got a small moment arm, so you actually get this uh, very tiny offset here. It's not very big, but it's there. But still, you've got a situation here where a basic plot wing has uh, nearly zero moment to start with. That's bad. Now it gets worse. <clears throat> uh, if you have a dihedral in the hinge, uh, you basically have a zero moment condition until you get far enough up where you've actually hit the dihedral of the, uh, that's included in that flop hinge. So it's only once you get up to here that you actually start seeing the moment come up. So again, a, a standard flop wing is bad, a flop wing with dihedral at the flop joint is even worse. Guess what I was flying at the World Championship last year? <laughs> so, uh, we need something that gets you past that initial zero moment period or you need a different design. Uh, some ideas for how to do that is you can get like starter springs and try to kick it open to begin with because once you get some amount of motion then it can kind of open the rest of the way. Uh, so people will talk about, well, just put a compressed spring in there or maybe a little torsion bar or things like that. But uh, I didn't look at those methods because there's other methods here that look more proactive and have one less mechanism that you have to have in your design. So the four things I've looked at here are rubber bands, uh, lever arms, uh, augmented lever arms is a bit of a new concept, and then torsion springs. Let me go into those. Uh, one of the first things is a bungee cord or a thick rubber band. 
something like the, uh, this is a shock cord that Quest sells. Fairly thin, but it actually works pretty well because it's got a diameter, you know, roughly around uh, 50 thousandths or 60 thousandths. So there's the moment arm that's easily contained and is repeatable. So that's a, a, a way to start, and you can see that just having, in this case, a 60 thousandths inch thick rubber band or a bungee cord, you've got an initial moment, even for the case of uh, the plop wing with that either uh, Another thing that people use a lot is this uh, putting in a moment arm here. That gives you a little bit more elbow room or more leverage. Uh, the only downside is that the rubber band tends to or will kind of drop into the gap uh, or the slot that's put in there for uh, accommodating the moment arm to the other wing. So if you look at this, um, one of the effects is, well, how, how much of a moment arm could I have? If I put in a short arm, do I get some? If I put in more, do I get more? Or should I put in a really long arm? Well, it turns out that for just a standard uh, moment arm shape that you get a fair amount of response uh, up to a thickness. Uh, of the length of the moment arm is about one times the wing thickness. You get a little bit more if you go up to about one and a half times the wing thickness, and beyond that, you don't get anything additional. So this study showed that for a standard shape, uh, there is basically a, a length beyond which you don't get any additional benefit. If you wanted to be really fancy, put in a moment arm that didn't poke out the bottom of the wing and you were shaving that moment arm, then the uh, maximum length of the moment arm would be even shorter, and the amount of moment produced by that arm is less. So it's not really great. Now, a new concept uh, is shown here where you had a clip that basically runs around the slot. And what that does is it prevents the rubber band from dropping down into that slot. And by doing so, you get a lot of additional moments. And we'll see that later on. A uh, final concept here is shown is a uh, torsion spray. You can just take a tension spray and tension, uh, preload that up. And that provides a pure moment to open up the way. Now, if you look at uh, just the theory, uh, this shows the various methods compared. Uh, these curves down here are the bad, bare wing with 
Saturn 1b. This shows the second stage, and you can see that the pop-out pin has not completely popped out. Or let's say it, it probably did pop out, but now when the vehicle has an angle of attack and there's loads on the pin, the pin wants to kind of hold up. So here's a good example for, hey, I know how these work now. I can go solve that problem. So that concludes the presentation. Uh, any questions? Oh, uh, slide 14. How did you uh, hold the uh, the free arm at an angle to take your measurements up there? Do your hand. Yeah. Right. Just, so when you got to zero, how did you make sure that you weren't when you're holding it at zero? How did you make sure you weren't actually putting some weight on the scale? Uh, actually, I only went down to about five degrees. So you didn't go to zero. Uh, usually not, but uh, in fact, I don't think that. Because you daily go to zero. Yeah. Right, five degrees. Right. right. You, you didn't really go to zero. Okay. Right. So. Um, Zero is, are you saying that the only force at all that can open your wing is due to the thickness of the rubber band when it's at zero? Uh, if you're using a rubber band, that's correct. Just zero. That's amazing. Yeah. Unless you've got, you know, if you got some, like, wing warping or if you get some air to kind of drive it in between by some weirdness or something. But it felt yeah. like a lot coming off of those. But to, to think all that's driven by the thickness of that teeny tiny rubber yeah. band. So if the rubber band was zero in thickness, if we had an anti rubber band, right. the wing would not open. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. Uh, two things. One, thank you. You did, you did a really good job of making this understandable for, for somebody without any formal engineering training, and I, I do appreciate that. Sometimes, sometimes there's some serious head scratching involved. So the, the, the flights, the, the, the 10, Two wings, two wings per flight, ten successful deployments, all with a bungee cord. Do you see situations where when you would go to the additional trouble of the lever on the cliff? Would that be for for uh, bigger models, or is it just something that hey, this is extremely interesting, but there's an issue with it? Uh, I know other modelers uh, use the lever arm, and they report good success doing that. Uh, but the, the, the innovation um, to clip, the clip that you add. Oh, um, you I would probably not go with the clip unless I had a really big wing, uh, because it looks like either either the bungee core method or the lever arm method, or in particular that, uh, the torsion spring, that's probably the direction I'm really headed. Okay. Uh, because that's very controllable, and once I've got the installation done, I think it's aerodynamically the cleanest installation, so uh, less drag during flight. And I have flown uh, torsion spring uh, flights, uh, two of those, and they were both successful. These seem like the kind of